Well, good morning. Not from Toledo Beach Marina, but from my brother's farm. So, hence the big red barn behind me. So, I've got some exciting news here. Um, things just keep falling into place for me lately. It's uh, been really good. And, and uh, I like where life is headed right now. So, it's perfect. So, this is what I got going on. If you're on Facebook or on Instagram or if you follow me, you'll see that I posted something on there. And uh, this is what I posted. I picked up another sailboat. It's a 1971 Irwin 32. So it's the uh, centerboard version. So it drafts 3.6 feet with it up and then 7 foot 10 inches uh, with it down. So I'm not going to pretend or lie and say this thing is in immaculate shape or ready to sail. It's going to need some work. But it has good bones. That's what I was looking for. Um, I was planning on getting a boat in January, February of next year, and have something bigger to sell for you know for the following remainder of the years. And this just popped up. The price was just too good to be true. Um, I checked it all out. Like I say it has good bones. It just needs some elbow grease. And I figured, you know what? So if I spent $7,000 on a boat, I might need to do some work to it. This I spent a heck of a lot less for. And I know i got to do some work. Bottom paint, top paint, deck paint, you know, and some teak that needs to be redone. Things that need to be rebedded. I might have to do it with the other boat anyways. I have to replace all the lines, um, sheets and halyards. I'd do it anyways, just so it's just peace of mind. But I figure I'm going to save myself some money in the long run. So, but like I say, it's not perfect. I haven't cleaned it at all. It's almost basically the way it was when I picked it up and I've gone through the cushions and I've gone through the storage and been finding little treasures here and there. Um, and that's what we're doing today. I'm going to gut it out of here, get everything out, the cushions out, everything that's in there out, and then um, start cleaning. So, but Follow along as we take this journey into this old Irwin 71, 32. So you can see the cockpit is full of stuff, uh, lines and stays and shrouds. And what my brother and I did last night is we tried to start the engine or to see if we had the engine would crank over. And that's why you see these items sitting in here because we just hooked a jump box to it. And yes, it does crank over. Didn't try to start it. Turned the fuel off to it, drained the bowl just to see if the starter was still working. Well, we can start with the... How about the deck first? So you can see my tow rail is teak and is in need of repair and oil. You can see the track there for the um, the jib in Genoa. Here, there's some damage here. So I knew this going into it that that would probably have to be replaced. But you know what? It's just wood and on the other side of this big barn is another big barn and inside that big barn is a full woodworking shop so my brother has he can do whatever you want him to do he's got everything to do it so i know i'm i'm safe there just planers and and whatnot so i've got a boom and this is the rolling boom or reefing roller boom so and that was in good shape. If we follow along, there is no soft spots on the deck. That's one thing I checked for. I want to say I wanted good bones. Um, and she has good bones. No soft spots on the deck. No uh, soft spots in the hull. You know, tapped on with a rubber mallet, listening for that that tone. So nothing there. Had one item that I really wanted, which is a roller furling. Really, really, really wanted that. So, so if we walk along here, I can see we go right through here. The mast is in decent shape. The spreaders need to be replaced. Um, if you hop up top here, you can see that this poor spreader has had it. So I did some research on there. I could get some aluminum ones made, but I could also make some new wood spreaders, which I'm probably going to end up doing it that way. They worked back then. They worked all these years. 
so I figure why not? Shouldn't hurt too bad. Uh, I still have a bunch of cushions what I used when I tied this thing down on deck. I'll come back here. I'm gonna try to get this mast off too. Of course, not by myself, but with some help. But you can see all the paint. This was put on in 1999, I believe. I have a couple surveys that were done. That's all coming off. I don't know if it's even the right paint. It has two speed winches, which is nice. And they work. They seem to be pretty tight. The back uh, rail was damaged. I think the boom slid on them when they were hauling it. Um, so that's off. That's down below. That needs to be cut. A new piece tigged in. And I have an uncle that can do that. Like I say, this thing is a mess. Um, but I just left it basically the same, same way it was when I got it. So you can see the gauge is there. Old, outdated. The teak needs to be replaced. I got lichen growing on it. I mean, there's moss growing in it here. Um, the builds is dry for the most part. There's a section of it where there's holding just a little bit of water, but nothing biggie. See all the companionway flats need to be replaced. There's the inside. Those still look good. So let's take a peek. Like I said, it's dirty in here. I think an extinguisher went off in here because there's an extinguisher powder everywhere. Um, let me put my glasses off. All right, I've moved some cushions around, but you can see the water over the years. He didn't tarp it up. Spence, he's had it for five years. Was going to redo it and never did. So it's not damaged. Just needs to be cleaned up. Um, the galley. Let's start with the galley. So we got the galley. You can see we got some. It's just some dirt and grime. He's cleaned. It does have a big uh, ice box. Quite large in there. It goes beyond those slats. I found this stove yesterday. <laughs> it's a propane stove, and then we have this shower. I found charts underneath here. So more storage for pots and pans and whatnot and there is there's engine parts in here spare parts spare propeller just stuff so lots and lots of stuff that needs to be pulled out and gone through and then of course there's some cleaners down here and <clears throat> more access got another table that flips up you got your storage back here you can see that they got the peeling and the paint deck here. This is where all those bolts are at for that track. So those need to come off and be rebedded. Pretty sure that's what's come from. So the first thing I noticed when I came inside when I bought the boat or looked at the boat was this. So this is one of the knees for the chain plates. And that's all it is. is it's right there, this little bit. Um, so I knew I was going to have to replace those, but the nice thing is the chain plates are all exposed. This chain plate was good here, and there's one inside the hanging locker that is in good shape as well. This chain plate goes all the way down to the bottom, and that wood's all good. Yes, it has leaked in the past, but it's not rotten. Um, you can see the cushions, the white powder. That's what I was trying to figure out when I looked at the boat the first time, what the powder was. And when I moved the cushions and it floated up in the air and I breathed it in, I knew right away it was extinguisher. And it's missing an extinguisher. Um, have a nice large aft berth. Do not ask me what they were doing with the tropical felt material that is spray glued everywhere. But, um, yeah, that's got to go. And this blue paint's got to go. That box needs to be redone. Um, once again, that's leaking. Oh, up underneath, that's the track on that side, so I knew that was going to happen, or I knew it was going to need to be replaced. Oh, we can go to the engine, it looks pretty rough, but it does crank over. And this is the Universal Atomic 4 35 horse engine, is what it's been told in the surveys. So, it does, when I looked at it, it did crank over. Some people at work ask me, like, well, hey, what happens if uh, the engine doesn't work? Well, the nice thing is I can rebuild it. They do have the parts. And someone said, well, what if you couldn't rebuild it in time for next year? Which should be able to. 
if it needs to be done but so far it's cranking over well i gotta do a compression test but i said you know worse comes worse i throw a plate on the back and i put an outboard on it for now that's worse comes worse so the cushions were all redone and they're in a really good shape <coughs> excuse me so they're all done in this burgundy, burgundy material and they're all there so that's nice um it came with this nice magma grill so that was one treasure I noticed right away when I got it. Um, it had this nice propane magna grill. It has a 750 watt uh, inverter in here. Oh, see, excuse me, 1750 watt inverter inside there. That looks new. It does have a full head. So, nothing special there. They put this lattice work down underneath the carpet on the floor. Is this lattice work too? I don't know what that's for. Um, maybe just to keep the floors clean and maybe keep the carpet off the floor. I'm not certain. They have a medicine cabinet in here that's seen some better days. That's going to go. Obviously, that was aftermarket. Doesn't have a latch to hold it on. The ports are all tiny little ports you can see them I want to replace those with opening ports this winter uh, the v-birth oh, we're getting kind of dark in here now so open this hatch let some light in only goes so far because it hits the boom but once again tropical felt so we got a little bureau here which is nice underneath the V-Birth is a, you can see the hole there, that's the holding tank that was installed, 25 gallon holding tank. It does have this nice teak, which is in good shape all the way around, other than needing a little scrub. Um, I mean, all in all, the boats needs some love. We'll just call it love, it just needs some love. You know, hanging locker here, you can see one of the chain plates right there it's that one's leaking that wood's not rotten so I mean that's good I can clean that all up and get that surface all taken care of again and here's the drain to pump out for the holding tank under the double berth in the settee here is a 27 gallon water tank and that's about it that's the initial walkthrough of this 71 Irwin 32 like I said needs work I'm not afraid of work I can do everything um, that needs to be done so today I am pulling cushions out cleaning all the drawers out getting my shop vac in here sucking everything out of here thing just needs to be scrubbed in here but coming clean so the quick cushions out you can see someone I think that old water tank or something they used for storage to make it easier and then this is what they did when they installed the new 25 gallon holding tank so this thing's just sitting in here so yeah that's the old tank they got a drain did I don't know 
know if I even necessarily want that in there because I'm losing so much space up here for storage. You can really can see how they got it in there. They, they took this out and took a chunk out right there and that's how they got it in and they spliced it back in there. And then this little doohicker, but I think I'm going to get rid of that. Because um, there's all that space up there underneath, I'm losing it just to having that in there. Um, so we'll see. And I pull that tank out. I'm just I'm not pulling the fiberglass off like they did. It's going to take my sawzall to it and cut it out of there. But there's no sense in having all that wasted space. This needs to be put back in properly. So. go there. <clears throat> I'll put this in. I'm going to screw it in there and make it screw it to that board. Stiffen it up around the edges so it has something better to sit on. Here's the hole that they cut in the floor. Um, we'll pull this off again. No engine cover. The only thing I can think of is they pulled it off because they couldn't access this darn bilge from where they were at. So, here's a little bilge pump sitting in there, it's not even sitting in the water. And there's a float switch down there. So, I don't know, maybe there's a hose here somewhere. This hose actually, I know where that hose goes. That hose goes to my uh, manual bilge. So, there must be a check valve in there so it doesn't go back in. And the pump was probably set down in there at one point in time, but it looks like they wired it up. Maybe the pump took a crap. So we'll put a new pump in there, check out that float switch, I mean, but everything else, I mean, it doesn't look pretty, but it's solid in there, so that's, that was the main part, make sure we have good bones, so, and that we do, so, yeah, here's the, here's actually the wiring for the bilge pump, so there's the automatic switch, manual switch, so the, everything's right there, so, and then this old girl, <laughs> We'll get this thing all going here. I mean, obviously hoses, and this one's not even tight. Oh, I know why it's not tight. They winterized this thing. So, it'll have to be gone through before I do anything. So, but, so this, I need to find, I need to do something there. I don't like that hole. And, they couldn't even cut the hole square to the radius. They could have done a better job at that and made a cover to put back in there so that'll be done so that'll be an access to the bilge I'll square up the hole a little bit reinforce it across right here because that's a weak point now and uh, make it so you don't fall in so I might just leave the floor the way it is I don't know what do y'all think put the comments in there I mean I've seen floors redone with other, you know, teak wood and whatnot. It seems like a lot of maintenance where I might be able to just get away with just the way this is. Of course, I don't like that. Or maybe just an area rug. Or maybe I'll put carpet down again. Who knows? So, cushions are burgundy. Maybe I'll just uh, make uh, some burgundy uh, outdoor carpet and throw it down. Let's see what happens. So, I'm trying to think of a color scheme for the boat. On the outside, I'm thinking of a black bottom paint, black top paint with a nice, maybe a burgundy stripe or blue stripe. I don't know. So we'll see. Let's get back to work. Dang, there's another thing in. Got my helper cleaning the bathroom out. Yeah. Found a nice, uh, nice supply of Kotex in case anybody needs any. Oh, we got cleaner. What do we have? What is that, Piper? I Toilet know. bowl cleaner. We might keep that. That might be good. We're well, going to put the cleaners right here. So if you see any more cleaners, we're going to stick it right there for now, okay? Okay. She's in the head. Playing around. Yep, she's got more cleaner. And more a toilet bleach, paper. And some toilet paper. <laughs> I'm working on ripping off this uh, beautiful, beautiful material. Do not rip that off. You don't rip it off. Why, well, you like it? Uh-huh. It's, <laughs> it's gone. You're supposed to be cleaning the bathroom. <laughs>
So I've got to take this little trim board off. This is the, of all the teak that's on the side here, this is the only one that has damage or delamination in the back. So the boards are, oh, well, that board right there is going to be redone and a couple of the other boards. Um, but that's the only one that needs to be um, repaired. So that one will be, and that's from that back rail leaking, of course. So, um, so they will, that's the only one I'm going to have to repair. So, won't be too bad though. something with that that stuff right there there's no it's just fabric there isn't the board there or anything so I gotta see what they put there originally that's the chain locker up there if I can get up there without breaking anything mainly myself there we go sorry about that see the chain locker up here Tell someone to be careful with the wood and she's kicking it all over the place. Anyway, so chain lockers up there. This is a hundred foot of road in there. So I'll go from there. Then I got little bits of mud in here. I'm going to take this off. I got a feeling that this is from a uh, mud dauber making a nest up there in the corner. So we'll see what I got going on there. Okay, pulled that top piece down. And uh, yeah, mud dauber nest. So all this mud was her crawling up underneath crawling up underneath the plate wood that was here covering all the coarse cleats and and whatnot the hardware up deck uh, which isn't leaking because you can see here and uh here not leaking so that's good um but yeah if you can see that nest doesn't have any holes in it that means there's <laughs> there's babies in there so i'm gonna take that off and scrape it outside all right, so I, like I said, I had a bunch of goodies in here. So this was the storage underneath the galley board there. So I mean, there's a ton. I mean, this thing's deep. It's not small. It's huge. It's going all the way back there. So I've got so goodies. I, like I said, there's a fillet knife and fish hooks. Just a little emergency light, but there's spare parts in there. There's a carburetor back there. There's an extra prop back there. Um, some hanks in there. There's a bowl for the um, carburetor. Um, just PC parts here and there. So I'm gonna dig those out of there. Okay, I'm done playing with the inside for the moment. So I just took the boom down. Got a broom. Got a little wind noise. So I'm gonna sweep off this deck. Get rid of every line I can get rid of. I don't run out of battery here today. So I got the boom off the deck. Kind of swept this part of the deck out. And just kind of working on getting some stuff off of here. Well, it's getting in the evening and I'm still here dinking around with this darn thing. Actually, honestly, as much as I've crawled around in the boat today, I haven't think, seen anything that has scared me or made me think, what did I do? Um, everything it looks really good um, I've got a few things to replace like I, I've already mentioned in the video so nothing bad it's just elbow grease a lot of work that someone just didn't want to do anymore or didn't have time for and other people just didn't want, they looked at it and just saw too much work and reality I don't think it's gonna take that long to get everything done hey everybody thanks for watching sorry about the length of the video I know it's about a half hour long um, it was just very difficult to edit the video without losing the content or showing you what I, what I was doing or what I had found with the boat as I was cleaning it out. So next week's video will be a continuation of my first day cleaning the boat and then day two when I go back and do some more uh, work on it. 
Um, so I appreciate everybody that takes their time out of the day to watch. And hopefully someone can learn something from it. Or, hey, comment. Comment down below. Down below. <laughs> and tell me what you think or anything that you see that I haven't seen. I know I've got some issues there I need to take care of, but nothing's, like, screaming at me. Like I said just a few minutes prior, nothing's screaming at me saying that I made a bad choice or a big mistake. So um, not afraid of... Oh, hard work, elbow grease, and this is what this little boat needs. That's not little, but that's what it needs. Anyway, um, please like, subscribe if you haven't. Um, this is the Irwin 32. It's a 1971. So if there's any other Irwin owners out there, 32, get a hold of me. Email me. Find me on Facebook or Instagram. Chit chat. Let me know what you find or what I found, and we can go from there. Well, than that. Thank you very much. I pre appreciate everybody that watches and likes my videos. Hopefully they get better in the future. Have a good day.